kind of feel a little bit like mainstream porn stars do at ABN. At the end of the weekend, they, they sound a little bit like this. So, um, forgive me for having a little bit of a broken voice today. Um, I'm going to try to project as much as possible. Um, I want to acknowledge that I am a white North American descendant on your, uh, of European settlers that I don't know the history of the land that I'm on today, except that it was a long history of nations, including Mississauga, before it was colonized by my ancestors. Um, I identify as a non-binary, femasculine, genderqueer, but today I speak from the point of view of a queer person who has been socialized, raised, and perceived as a cis woman. I generally speak as a non-binary feminist alongside my own connections to genderqueer, non-binary femme, and trans identity. But in this piece, I am speaking from my own experiences as a female and a genderqueer. Today, when I say us, I speak of women, non-binary femmes, and anyone loosely associated with the experiences of female oppression. I also hold privilege as a porn producer who profits off images of sex workers, as well as being a sex worker myself. My ability to travel, sleep in a warm bed, eat, write, think, play, and do activism is due in part to profiting off the images at, of my friends and coworkers. I would like to acknowledge them and, uh, in this keynote and thank them for their continued support and collaboration. <laughs> um, okay, I'm just going to get right into it. What I'm about to say breaks a lot of unspoken rules in the porn star handbook. We're not really supposed to talk about this, and I will tell you why when I'm done. My name is Courtney Trouble. I am a sex worker, a porn performer, and a survivor of rape and sexual abuse. In my freshman year of high school, I was molested by my older stepbrother. I didn't know it then, but it totally broke me. I broke up with my high school sweetheart and lied to all of my friends about why we split. I told them all a different lie and it caught up to me. On the last day of ninth grade, they threw hate mail and death threats in my head. I had to leave school. That summer, my mother moved and her children and stepchildren all moved far, far, far away from me and nobody ever knew what happened. The next year, while visiting my mom in her new small town, I was raped by a man I had a crush on in a tent on a date. This date rape experience was coercive and manipulative, and afterwards he called me cold, and he called me a bitch as I ran off to shave off my body hair. I chased my childhood for another year, or maybe 10. Porn stars aren't supposed to talk about this, because it reaffirms every fucked up sexist, classist stigma against us. We are victims, our families abandon us, we are broken, we're seeking love in all the wrong places, and for that we are second class citizens, and in some cases not seen as citizens at all. It doesn't matter that in these cases of abandonment and abuse and rape, there are more correlation than causation. And that even with 240,000 yearly victims of sexual abuse, only approximately 2,000 women take a dip in the porn performer pool in a given year. The forced connection between sexual abuse and sex work signifies an even larger systematic discrimination in place. That sex work is bad for us. That porn is an undignified profession for broken women. That literally the only field in which women consistently make more than money, more money than men, is also the most contemptuous. If conservative media outlets were allowed to get a hold of my survivor story, they would most assuredly consider my past to be in direct correlation with my present, and make assumptions that I am a being, as that I am a victim, being further objectified by the adult industry. Many feminist groups of our time would make the same argument about me. While there are so many of us. Not all people who identify with the word feminist are down with porno. In my research, and which by that I mean searching the feminist porn tag on Tumblr. <laughs> That's my research. Um, anyway, so in my research, there's an alarming growth of anti-porn feminist college students. Um, they're supported by media pundits and radical feminists who argue that all BDSM is real violence, all porn is rape, and sex workers come from damaged homes, and therefore we don't count as people who are allowed to make our own decisions. And we are just leaving a trail of carnage behind us as we go. Maybe that last little bit is true. <laughs> sex workers who have survived rape and sexual abuse silence themselves because our secrets are ammunition against us. While I have never been objectified by the adult industry that I participate in, I have no doubt in my mind that I would be exploited by Fox News or Gail Dines in a heartbeat due to my status as a survivor. People love to tell us sex workers what we should and shouldn't be doing. We probably get more unsolicited advice about our lives than children do. But nobody ever asks us to speak for ourselves. 
The feminist movement of our generation is battling rape culture, a huge pro-life resurgence, incarceration for free speech, inequality in our jobs and families, racism, transphobia, classism, slut-shaming, body-shaming, so many other fucking things that I care about. I see censorship and stigma around sex work holding me back as a feminist from participating in those conversations. Porn stars are not allowed to talk to queer youth or volunteer at schools. We can't teach sex ed. We can't become mentors. We can't become teachers or psychologists. We are not encouraged to take roles of authority in our own fields of activism. We are not welcome to run for office, propose initiatives, or lobby the government. I see academics, administrators, journalists, the companies we work with, online resources, and even fans censoring and exploiting us simply because of how our society views sex workers. They misquote us, they use our private names, they list our class schedules, they post our home addresses, they steal our money, they steal our content, they flag and report our social media accounts, they do everything but tie us to a stake and burn us like witches. And some of us have been physically hurt. I'm banned from the largest social network in the world about 30% of the year. How's that for censorship? And if you're a sex worker or a porn star or even just a woman, good luck getting a job at Facebook or Google or PayPal or anywhere where you would, where you would have the power to decide what is and isn't offensive or appropriate. And if you are a sex worker or a porn star or maybe even just a woman, good luck getting a job anywhere at all if this conference is on your resume. If a woman retires from porn or sex work or the adult industry, it is almost entirely met with backlash from those who would call her a failure, to those who would accuse her of burning out, to those who would use her retirement as a sign that, see, porn really is totally evil. Look how it hurts her. Like hurts us in a way that being a senator or owning a bakery doesn't hurt us, or how raising a family doesn't hurt us, or how leaving the house on any, any given day to face catcalling and sexual harassment doesn't hurt us. Sex work in and of itself, doesn't fucking hurt us. The discrimination and sexism that keeps us from making money in other professions, that hurts us. Those stigmas that strip us of privacy and dignity, that hurts us. The socialization, the socialization that makes people rape and kill sex workers hurts us. The government that won't make our jobs legal or protected or safe fucking hurts us. The assumption that sex workers makes, the, the sex ed, the assumption, hey. <laughs> Workers make, being a sex worker makes us unfit to run countries, companies, and households. It hurts us. It isn't porn that objectifies women. The world objectifies women, and porn, and porn workers, and strips us of our humanity, turns us into case studies, scar letters, and hard lessons learned. As a youth, I was a riot girl, and I guess I still am. Riot girl was built on the foundation that survivors need to take up space to name their abuse. I've never, come out as a, as, I've never come out as a survivor in public spaces because I'm afraid of strengthening the anti-porn rhetoric or losing my privacy. Sex workers silence themselves to protect themselves. The adult industry, feminist porn participants included, don't encourage us to do otherwise very often. I have seen porn performers shy away from speaking out against companies and directors that fuck them over. We discourage open and, open and public communication with other performers and producers about ethical production standards because it puts us in jeopardy of losing the only jobs we can get. I have seen performers of all genders get pay cuts, kill fees, and blacklisted for being queer, taking chances, asking for protection, or challenging production standards. I have seen sex workers stuck in dead-end jobs because they are the wrong size, the wrong color, the wrong marketing keyword to get decent work in their chosen field. I have seen sex workers who are way more than ready to retire stuck in endless webcamming schedules and clip sales because you can't put porn on a resume. I, have made my, I have myself have made light of the severe censorship I encounter on a daily basis in order to do business in the industry. I have withheld my beliefs and interests for paycheck. And outside of porn, I have presented myself as nothing more than a housewife or a fast food worker my husband owns a pizza restaurant. On many occasions, because the stigma behind what I really do for a living makes most conversations with strangers unbearable. I'm sick of being silenced. I'm sick of silencing myself. I want to embrace the culture of calling out our weaknesses as a community. I want to enable consent culture to permeate our community and provide us with systems of accountability and change. This is my motivation. This is my inspiration. 
I want the feminist porn movement to be just more than a group of us rallying around each other, self-empowering, cool short films and porn sites. I want us to stand up for the empowerment of sex workers. I want us to fight to end the discrimination against porn, the people who work in it, and the people who watch it. I want us to stand for more than just the importance of diversity, and for that to happen, we have to fully embrace our diversity. And for that to happen, we have to all agree that we all belong here equally, that we are intangibly, irrevocably important, and that while we ask for the world to center the voices of sex workers and sex positive artists and performers, we in turn center the voices of those among us who are further marginalized by their race, size, or gender identity. We must prove that we are objectifying ourselves in the good sense of the definition, by giving expression to our form that others can identify. We are the feminist porn movement, and we aren't just here for porn, we're here as well for the fucking feminism. <laughs> to the average male porn consumer, or what I'm going to call from here on out, with much, much love, of course, to the casual cis guy. <laughs> it's cool, he's casual. He's not hurting anybody. He just likes porn, and he's always had access to it. It's no big deal. Okay, I mean, so anyways, like, you have to trust that if you move beyond making what you think that that casual cis guy wants, that you will attract new customers. I guarantee you that the highest grossing porn companies here in this room today are the ones making porn that cater to everybody. The casual cis guy customer being last on the list. I should know because I'm one of them. I own, I may own one of the only porn production companies in the world that doubled in gross income in 2013. And I maintain a strict, all-inclusive casting manifesto that encourages creative performer autonomy over potential profit margin. The thing is, you don't even have to cater to the casual cis guy. You barely have to get on their radar. They will find you anyways. They will watch your porn anyways. They will generally steal it, but sometimes they'll even buy it. <laughs> to give them more credit, we have got to start ignoring the common data that tells us that there are only a few kinds of porn that will reach the much needed audience that will fund you. The casual cis guy will find you because it's porn. <laughs> and they own porn. They are entitled to it. They were socialized to like it. They belong to it. They invented it. So forget about them. Casual cis guys will tell you what they think they want, but they will still watch and pay because that's the way they've been socialized. It's easy. Forget about them and serve yourself. <laughs> serve your friends. Make porn that makes you laugh or cry or come or fight with someone. Make porn that says something. Make porn that says nothing. Make it as a treat. Make it as a manifesto. Make porn for everyone else. Make porn that actively challenges the gaze of the casual cis guy. The secret is that dedicated porn watchers, the connoisseurs, love a good challenge. They want what's new. They want what scares them. After they scour Pornhub for an hour looking for the perfect POV road job, they will find you because inevitably, porn fans always want something interesting and new. So do something interesting and new. Don't worry, you'll buy it anyways. Trans Girls Revolution Porn Style Now is my highest grossing film ever. Lesbian Curves was my highest grossing film before that, and it directly funded the project. 
I thought I was taking money from a sure thing and investing it in a love letter, a punk rock paradise, but most of all, what I thought would be a financial investment in social justice and not a means to pay my rent. I thought for sure that my choice is to include trans women who don't talk with their penises, trans women who don't ejaculate, trans lesbians, trans women of color, muffing, fisting, sporting, crying, BDSM, performative non-consent, and sex in the middle of a dyke march would mean that trans girls would alienate all of the powerful, casual, cis guy consumers and I would barely recoup the costs of production. But I did. I doubled it. It surpassed everything. Casual cis guys fucking fell in love with it. <laughs> They've become obsessed with the stars. They've become obsessed with the concept. They keep bringing me new ideas for different scenes, not that I'll listen. <laughs> <laughs> They've purchased multiple copies. They've stocked it in Lover's Package. <laughs> that doesn't look anything like mainstream transsexual porn and has still managed to get nominated for Best Film at the Transgender Erotica Awards alongside totally offensive titles like S-Word Strokers and T-Word Chasers. I took a chance on a project that I knew I needed to make and I made it without worrying about what a casual cis guy porn fan was going to think. Well, I'm lying. I was totally frightened about what that guy would think. He's my friend. And this costs a lot of money. To be honest, I thought the same thing about lesbian curves. There's no such thing as BBW lesbian porn. I made that film to bridge a gap between the BBW porn niche, queer porn, and mainstream girl-girl corporate pornography, and some grand optimism that my risk would be rewarded, with copious offers to work for Sovereign Sire and Sin Sage for all the big companies as a porn star a crossover star, the next Dylan Ryan, the next Jis Lee. I fantasized that when my one little film would change everything. I put myself on the cover as a statement of self-love because I was scared. I went all in. I am, I was, and still am actively trying to eradicate the walls that have been placed between plus-size performers and the smaller ones. I loathe the separation of plus-size performers from general pornography. I am not a fetish. I am not a niche. I am not a special interest. I'm a professional fucking porn star with a totally perfect human body. That goes for everybody here. <laughs> preferences for smaller breasts, darker skin, freckles, piercings, whatever, those are mine, by the way. Whatever. But to separate it all up entirely it doesn't work for the adult interested workforce, nor do I think it does a real service for the consumers. They're all just looking for cream pie compilations anyways. Any cream pies, really. So why when it comes to plus size porn are there so few options for work? If you're white and straight, you can get an easy with Rodney Moore who'll put you on the cover of a movie called Whale Watchers and pay $400 for a bareback POV sex. Him, of course. Or you can play nice and flirt with the owners of one or two of the small big companies with big egos. And if you're light skinned and straight, he will fly you down there, put you in a boy girl scene, great lights, great makeup, maybe he'll spoil you, unless you ask for more money or have a husband, or want to work with women only or condoms. Or you can end up in any number of low budget amateur porn gigs where you will end up looking like crap, getting paid for crap, having bad sex, and your name won't even get published on your scene. They may ask you to eat seven cakes in a row. They may ask to weigh you on camera. They may fire you for having smaller tits than they think is appropriate, or wanting to use condoms on set. And no matter where you work, they will call you fatty and chubby and plumper and words that I won't even let come out of my mouth. All under the thin veil of keyword marketing. When you know that all they really need to put down is big tech cream pie, and they're gonna do just fine. <laughs> Sorry. Every time I've applied for a lesbian porn company, I've been met with shrugged shoulders and bullshit apologies and emails like, if you can get all of our customers interested in that kind of stuff, maybe we'll try it. And by that kind of stuff, they mean my body. My totally acceptable, healthy human body. There are still not enough feminist porn options for plus size sex workers either, and this is where I might get a little bit confrontational. There are no alt porn companies that hire my size. There are no hairy or natural girl companies that will hire my size. Queer porn is the only size integrated genre of pornography at this time, and even some queer porn companies are hesitant to hire plus size. And for those of you in this room who are producers and feminists, and who have fear around including plus size performers in your work on a regular basis, I want you to remember that fat is a feminist issue. And by separating us from your projects, you are separating this movement. Go home and research feminist fat positivity and fucking change your story. 
I don't care if it looks obvious. I don't care if you start small. Just do it. Our male-dominated culture relies on our obsession with being smaller. The diet industry perverts our society and promotes female weakness and obedience, and chaos and competition among women that distracts us and discourages us from organization. By leading a feminist movement that equates all bodies with sexual worth by a strong pornographic activism, we are directly challenging the powerful system that reduces women to their desirability and ability to succeed in our thin-obsessed hunger, hunger games. If we can blur the lines of our society's beauty standards to include all of us, we can directly improve the self-esteem of young women and men who find their form. Self-esteem is power. Confidence has so much to do with improving our own lives. There's something that Margaret Tro said in a film that came out when I was 18 that saved my life. Here's what she said. When you don't have self-esteem, you will hesitate before you do anything in your life. You will hesitate to go for the job that you want to go for. You will hesitate to ask for a raise. You will hesitate to call yourself an American. You will hesitate to report a rape. You will hesitate to defend yourself when you are discriminated against because of your race, your sexuality, your size, or your gender. You will hesitate to vote. You will hesitate to dream. For us to have self-esteem is truly an act of revolution. That revolution is long overdue. Let us rise up to monitor the direct challenge of us. Let us strive to be a community that encourages self-esteem and confidence. I believe we can all make porn that achieves those goals. It's not only imperative that feminist porn companies and filmmakers put fat people on their projects, it's also important for the rest of feminist porn community to center those performances in their reviews, their academic research, their affiliate blogs, their critiques. We can use this pornography to help further feminism's complicated but powerful relationship to fat acceptance. We can use films like Lesbian Curse to make a difference outside of the porn industry. We can create role models like April Flores and Betty Black and Kitty Stryker to inspire young women to fight for confidence against a system that seeks to destroy their self-love. as a white person in a foreign country on white colonized land, I am an accomplice to the racist nature of this system. As I stand here talking about my experiences and the experiences of my colleagues, I'm actively taking space away from a genderqueer sex worker of color, a mixed race trans woman, or any number of other folks who have been incredibly important things to say, and about how we can make this community better at fighting our own institutionalized oppression. I have taken... highly privileged space as a fat, genderqueer dyke, polyamorous punk, invisibly disabled, porn-ranking sex worker, an irrevocably white-skinned person. Intersectionality is, a complex, is complex, and this is exactly what it looks like. This next part will not come easy, and it doesn't make me happy to say it. The academic system is not set up to value the voices of the oppressed. We accept that by default when we forget to center new leaders of color to teach, motivate, challenge, and lead our movement. It's complicated because leaders of color, like the incredible co-founder of this conference, Dr. Maria Miller-Young, or longtime sex worker activist, Cinnamon Maxine, face far more challenges than people like myself when it comes to getting here to do the work and speaking up. But those voices are the ones that we need to hear the most. And what they might say if they were up here is that we aren't doing enough. That we need to be more inclusive, more aware, more sensitive to the entire community's needs. I am incredibly grateful for the opportunities I have been given to speak and perform and educate and inspire. And I hope I can inspire all of us to think harder and work harder to make feminist porn more racially inclusive. The majority of modern queer porn is created by people of color like Shine Louise Houston, Toby Hillmeyer, Jis Lee, Asia Pop Films, Gary Gray, Simon Maxine, Betty Black, and Fillmore 510. As queers in a tight-knit community, we do realize that to be a person of color and queer is significantly different than being white and queer. We center those voices. The queer porn scene is growing and thriving and pulsing through the veins of this community. I'm so honored to be a part of a small, to be a small part 
of a community that places so much value on intersectionality and on anti-oppression. We have been forced to be innovators. We are the ones to look up to, the ones to look out for. We are the future of feminist porn, so watch that space. It doesn't matter if we consider ourselves anti-oppression allies or are educated. It doesn't matter if you look in the mirror and you don't see a racist, or look out into the world and don't see those systems of oppression. By continuing on, without acknowledging our privilege, will only make the rift between white feminism and women of color deeper. This world is still affected by racial imbalances and institutionalized oppression. If we sit here and continue doing what we are doing, even though we know there aren't enough people of color winning awards, screening films, getting performance gigs, or even sitting in this room, if we acknowledge that we want more people of color here and attempt outreach, even if we do that, we are being inherently racist by continuing our work without them. I challenge everyone here, all producers, writers, performers, media, academics, and fans, to actively confront and interrupt how we perceive people of color within our industry and battle those stigmas head fucking on. What are they so we can recognize them? Women of color continually stigmatize as hypersexual or trashy despite the countless years that American slaves submitted to rape and molestation. They are perceived as uneducated and poor or unsophisticated while our institutions and governments have done nothing to pay back the debts created by slavery and indentured servitude that our ancestors created. Women of color are also often stigmatized as angry and loud and for that I have to ask, what the fuck is wrong with being angry and loud? Why is it so taboo? and injustices within our own community. Why are we scared of confrontation? There are reasons to be angry and there are reasons to be loud. I want to acknowledge that most of the inspiration I got for this segment um, was from Akio Maroon, Tanisha HD, and Dr. Maria Miller's presentations in yesterday's panel, Sexual Consumption, Labor, and Expressions by Women of Color, and that my friends and colleagues, Cinnamon Maxine and Ava Flores, helped me frame these thoughts and even lent me words. I want to make sure that we can succeed in centering those voices in future conferences, screenings, and awards galas. They are just as important as mine. It is not right that I'm speaking for them without the system making space for them to speak to you themselves, and for that, I'm sorry. I want to personally apologize for taking up even more space as a white person. And if you are a person of color in this room and you want to stand up and address the crowd, I would like to take as much time as we need right now to make that space for you, even if it's just to stand up and say your name. I love you, Courtney. Thank you so much. Um, this is heaven. Thank you for being and saying the wisest things that the world needs to hear. There is no Man, there's no, there is nobody on the planet speaking to justice and truth and equality the way you are right now. There's nobody. Fuck, fuck you, Obama. Fuck you, all <laughs> like, Honestly, yeah, in Canada, our political, our, our sexual, our, our, everything is really behind where you are and your courage, your truth, your love, your passion, and your kindness in, in the space of all this injustice and savagery to women and just just shit that I can't even, you know, I'm fucking crying up here too. You're honestly saying the most important words the world needs to hear, so thank, thank you. you. What is your name? My name is Addie. Um, my name's Toby, and I, I want to say that um, earlier today I overheard someone mentioning that there were no indigenous presenters at this conference. And I know that my bio says multiracial and it doesn't specify, but I'm indigenous, Yaqui, Chicana, and European. And those are all very important aspects of me. Um, I also want to say, if you don't already know, I'm a performer, a director, and I run Handbasket Productions. It's, you don't have to, it's not. <laughs> 
I'm a fucking baby left wide thinking I don't give a shit. <laughs> community needs to not only center the voices of people of color who can be here in this room, but we need to slow down and make sure that we are including the voices and the needs of those who can't be here in this space. When the feminist porn community talks about diversity, we are not talking about making sure that you have one of everything on your DVD or putting women and trans on your event flyers. Diversity in feminist porn means that we are fighting not only for ourselves and our own demons, but we are also fighting for the rights of our brothers and sisters and non-binary kin. We are showing solidarity for equal access to adult entertainment for a diverse audience of women, men, and non-binary folks. We are showing solidarity for sex workers of all races. Feminist communities have fallen to the ground in utter failure. Riot Girl, beloved, my heart included, because they could not get a hold of intersectionality. Let us be the exception to that rule. Seeing images of ourselves reflected back to us in media that we engage with is extremely important. Each positive image we see can break down a few moments of shame, pain, or self-hatred. For those of us in the world who aren't cis, white, thin, and able-bodied, representation in porn is absolutely 100% essential. Let us take the opportunities that we have been given in this medium and this movement to break every stereotype, to tell new stories, to inspire to points of view that rise above our own. Each of us in this room is a microphone for our entire community. The people we hope to reach are already watching us. We just have to reciprocate that attention and make a connection. It is only when we are all working together as feminists, sex workers, academics, people of color, fat activists, queers, trans dykes, gay boys, riot girls, and casual cis guys, will we begin to see real change in the way that sexuality is represented and respected in our society. We make porn. We talk about porn, watch porn, critique porn, perform in porn for 100 billion different reasons. Making money is a really big reason, but it's not our only excuse. That's what separates us from those of us in this room from the convention floor at XBiz or ABN. Once we put aside our fears that the casual cis guy customer won't buy our porn, we are free, free to make whatever the fuck we want. Free to have feminist communities and queer communities who will support our projects with money and attention and love. Free to fight our own demons and speak our minds. Free to use porn to affect feminism. Free to let our feminism inform our porn. <coughs> you like the cat memes? <laughs> I'm gonna put them up on Tumblr. Um, um, I really like the definitions of actualize and realize. I think I might tap people on my body. Um, feminism is informing our porn everywhere in the industry. Just in the past year, AVN added a plus size performer and a lesbian porn performer category to their awards roster. XBiz added a feminist porn movie of the year to its roster. Both ABN and Exodus hosted first ever feminist porn panels during their conventions. They, the protested but necessary, forgive me, tranny awards, changed their name to the Transgender Erotica Awards after people spoke up over the derogatory name. People like me, people like Toby, people in this room. We did that. X Critic stopped using trans slurs in its reviews of indie trans positive porn films like Doing It Again, Playful Awakening, and Trans Girls. These things are happening because we are here. We exist, we are relevant, we are cool. These things happen because we demanded them. These things are happening because women work in porn, because queers buy porn, because women make porn, because we showed up, because we spoke up. I want to leave you feeling inspired. I want to burden you with positive energy. And I want to leave you tasting the opportunity and optimism that's already on your lips. I admit I have a lot to say, 
I have a lot to do, I have a lot to shoot, I have a lot of fucking feelings. I've also got a lot of ideas, like amazing ideas. So many ideas that I will never have enough time in my short life to start them all and finish them all the way that they need to be done. So I have a gift for you. I am giving you my free ideas. They're yours to take, yours to transform, yours to benefit from, and yours to ponder. Here are some free ideas for you to actualize you for your feminist porn manifesto. <laughs> know your local laws around obscenity. Then find out the loopholes. <laughs> Start a VOD company with feminist porn reviews, ratings, comments, and a star index. And keep it updated. Good luck. <laughs> Start a gay porn site that adopts the same all-inclusive casting standards as trouble films in pink and white. Start a make a porn film loosely based on Gorilla Girls. Shoot it in public. Let them fuck on the steps of the MoMA. Hire trans women. Allow them to exist exactly the way that they want to exist. Do a porn scene where nobody takes their clothes off. Interview asexuals and shoot scenes based on what they're fantasizing about. Send letters to your government about protecting women's rights and sign them with your porn name. <laughs> Run for office. Woo. Woo. Design a college course that helps untrained students on the body shaming, slut shaming, and fear-based sex education that they received in high school. Teach boys not to rape. Teach girls to fight. Teach children to love themselves. Design an alternative sex education program for teenagers. Make it queer friendly, unabashedly honest, and informative. Make a porn you would show your mother. <laughs> Organize a sex work visibility and advocacy march in your town. Organize a Take Back the Night march. Make a series of viral YouTube videos where porn stars talk about rape and consent culture. Get porn companies to donate advertising space on their websites to show your videos. Finish that documentary you're making on female rape fantasies. Make a documentary out of all of the queer porn TV interviews on its YouTube channel. It'd be fascinating. Make a straight porn film. Hire a trans woman to be the main star. Don't call it trans porn. Don't make it about her being trans. film, but include a few women of size. Don't mention anybody's size in your marketing. Show people putting on condoms in your porn. Show people using dental dams and gloves. Find close friends who suffer from institutionalized repression and oppression and give them space. Let them speak at your conference. Let them write your next film. Let them teach your class. Create and affirm positive role models in our community. Design movie posters for your favorite feminist porn films and put them up in your neighborhood. <laughs> for one year, make it a point to only work with trans, fat, or POC porn stars. And if you can't find those people, don't make anything. <laughs> put yourself in service of artists of color. Support what is out there instead of making more non-inclusive work. Make cute gifts for your favorite films and promote them on Tumblr. <laughs> Start an affiliate blog where you make money by sharing the porn you love with people you don't know, which you're already doing for free, right, anyways? <laughs> Hire a feminist to run your DVD marketing firm. Hire a lesbian to shoot your lesbian porn. Hire a trans person to shoot your trans porn. And pay for your porn, at least sometimes. <laughs> porn you believe in. Help others make porn they believe in. Tell your friends about your relationship to pornography. Share your porn with your friends. Leave it on your coffee table. Leave it on your television. Educate yourself thoroughly on transgender issues. Understand what the differences are between gender identity, gender presentation, and gender performance. Explore your own. Understand that gender neutral pronouns are as much of a preference as gendered ones. Use the pronouns people tell you to use. Do not assume that someone is cis or trans or non-binary just by the way they look. Know what a turf is and avoid them at all costs. <laughs> or, you know, make them not be turfs. 
Understand cultural appropriation. Examine how you are inspired by cultures you don't identify with. Know why it's important to make responsible decisions around visual imagery and experiences that aren't your own. Write an article about how cultural appropriation affects pornography, how culturally appropriative porn affects its audience. Write letters to mainstream porn companies. Tell them to stop using derogatory terms in their marketing, especially those of you who don't get a paycheck from the adult industry. Instead of complaining that something in mainstream porn is fucked up, tell them, tell them it's fucked up. <laughs> especially if you don't rely on them for your paycheck. If you yourself get called out, don't blame call out culture. Just listen. If somebody is speaking to you, think about how long it takes you to speak up about stuff that makes you angry. Don't ever call a marginalized person defensive when they call you out. The opposite of defense is offense. Don't be offensive. Make a straight film from the POV of the woman. Build an entire company around. If you're a porn fan, tell the companies you watch what you want to see. Request your favorite stars, buy their scenes, leave comments, interact with the companies you admire. Support performers by never giving them your unsolicited advice, by not judging their bodies, whether they get bigger or smaller or stay the same, by not adding them to their friends, their family, by respecting their privacy, by not judging their life decisions, by not insulting their intelligence, by not comparing them to other performers, by not calling them crazy, by not judging or questioning their sexual orientation based on the way they work or who they work or who they fuck off camera, by not judging or questioning what they do for a living, when they do what they do for a living might not always look like feminism. By inviting them to come and speak at your next academic function. By giving them tips, wish list gifts, or whatever the fuck you call those webcam tokens. Most performers do not make an hourly wage. By giving them, your vo by giving them a voice on your radio show, in your book, in your blog, in your academic journal, on your news website. Support them by funding their first directorial efforts by retweeting their affiliate code so that they make extra money from their performances. They worked hard to make it for you. Fight for the right to protect images of raw female desire. Fight to keep fisting in female productive, produ produced porn films. Fight to keep squirting. Fight to show menstrual blood, tears, and positive consensual depictions of BDSM in film. Organize a monthly or seasonally public porn screening event where people can talk to the directors and the performers and themselves and request what comes next. Let it be the only theater where the audience is allowed to talk to the filmmakers. <laughs> Fight back against sexist behavior when you see it at a porn convention or anywhere. Fight back against rape culture when you see it happen at a porn convention or anywhere. Let them know that we are here. We are in their space. We are watching them. We are holding them accountable. Join adult community forums and expose the sexist trolls that work in the porn company we do businesses with. Do we do business with? We can't do it ourselves. We do business with them. Make porn with someone you don't know. Make porn with someone you love. Make porn about someone you love. Let yourself breathe. Let yourself explore. Let yourself experiment. Edit naked. <laughs> hire fat people. Hire black people. Hire trans people. Hire disabled people. Hire everyone. Make porn that lifts us up as a community. Make the porn you wish you could have found when you were a teenager. Make porn that scares you. Make porn that challenges you. Let your feminism inform your porn. Let your porn inform your feminism. Let me take a fucking nap. <laughs>